Hallelujah. Thank you, Donna. Thou art a shield. Remember now, get on the phone. Tell people to come and join this segment. We've been having a great time today. We're talking about evangelism, evangelism through hip-hop. We've seen what God's doing in the, in the prison system. We've talked with chaplains and someone that came out of the prison system. And now we're going to talk about evangelism and, and, and the written word, poetry, how that God can use. You know, there's a, what you have a gift for, God can take that and use that not only to bless you, but to build up his kingdom. So take time sometime in the segment to call 1-888-731-1000 and uh, let somebody pray with you. We're glad to have with us today Marshall Pope. Hey, buddy. God bless you. Amen. Uh, We met you last year, uh, I I guess just about a year ago. It was. And uh, God has uh, done some great things in your life. And and then uh, just sitting here, you're telling me of a tragedy that took place in your life. I lost my son last year, July the 9th, 2015. He was shot twice in the back. Wow. And then out of that, God is birth a, a poem that you have written? Right. I was, you- struggling, I was struggling with forgiveness. You know. Um, with forgiving I'm, the gentleman that yeah, shot. I'm I can human. understand that. I'm human, so it's hard. It's hard dealing with it and struggling with forgiveness. This young man that took my son's life and he knew him. He knew my son and my son knew each other. And I tell kids all the time, sometimes it ain't the one that's telling you that they hate you, that you're enemy. Sometimes it's the friends that you got to look out for. Yeah, you know, David, in one of his uh, songs that he wrote, he said it was my own familiar friend right. that that betrayed me. Absolutely. And uh, my voice is a little hoarse uh, from the allergies. From pollen. Yeah, the pollen, allergy. yeah. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. Uh, the poem I wrote is called He Forgave Me. God reminded me that he forgave me. And so, therefore, I got to try to find it in my heart to forgive this young man. My tears provide the ink for this poem, and my pain provide the words I write. Young man, why did you stop my son's heartbeat when you wasn't the one that gave him life? I have struggled with this for months. Why was my family chosen for this task? Man said never to question the Lord. But God said, if it's the truth you seek, then ask. I come as your humble servant from the dust of the earth, breathing the breath that you gave me to forgive all trespassers that trespass upon me was my promise to my father the day he forgave me. I'm tempted by anger, my Lord. Years back, I could have murdered this young man with no hesitation. But that was before I accepted God's grace and mercy to be the voice and face of inspiration. Father, you knew this day would come. When I reach this chapter in your book of life, if it is written I shall suffer like the Son of God, then who am I to question your sacrifice? I stand humble like your faithful servant Job, on the love of the one that made me. Forgive them, Father, for they know not, cried Jesus, and with that same compassion he forgave me. I would go to my son one day, but he would not return to me. Forever absent from the body, but in my heart you shall forever be. Through teary eyes I wrote this poem, asking God to guide my shaking hand. Each word represents my faith in you, Lord, but not my faith in man. The hardest thing I ever had to do is the one thing I believe can now save me, and that is forgiving the young man that took my son's life, because when I needed forgiveness, God forgave me. Amen. Boy, awesome. You know, so many things, Marshall, that happens to our lives. Right. That if we learn to forgive. Absolutely. You know, that, you know, Jesus said, I, Jesus made it pretty clear. And that if some, sometimes this is the hardest thing for us. Right. He said, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, whatever that trespass is, then your heavenly father can't forgive you. Absolutely. You know, and that's that's really hard for us as Christians to, hard. to hang on to. But it lit, the only thing that's going to shut heaven up over you completely without God hearing you is that unforgiveness. It's hard. It shook my faith a whole lot. But I had to remember that everything is written. 
every move that we make is written. God already knew that our family was going to face this. And to test our strength, to see how strong we was in time of grief, you know, it, it pulled my family closer together. You know, losing my son was the worst thing I, I could ever imagine, you know. But I still got faith in God that he don't make no mistakes. Yeah. You know, Jesus dying on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they, they do not know, know what they do. Right. And then Stephen, when he was stoned, and in Acts, Luke, uh, the physician, recorded it. He said, uh, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. You know, and even though Jesus didn't uh, predestined it to happen, but he knew it was going to happen. Right. And because he knew it was going to happen, he provided strength for you. You know, um, we, we talk about this all the time. You do it in your poems right. uh, that God has a plan. God, Absolutely. God, God's plan is for everybody to go to heaven, everybody to be saved. Uh, I don't think that God's plan is for some to go to heaven and some go to hell. I think God's plan is for everybody to go to heaven. Now, I know not everybody's going to heaven. Right. I'm not, I know not everybody's going to accept Jesus Christ. I know that not everybody is going to respond to uh, because they're, they're, they're free. God gives them the freedom, just like the young man that shot your son. Right. That was so hard. Uh, he could choose, and he made a wrong choice. Right. He chose to 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 follow his uh, physical instinct instead of his right. godly instinct, and from that he took a life. And that yet God's touching your heart that you can help people. You know, if somebody's watching today, and and it, we, you you never know who's watching uh, a segment, but maybe they have just gone through something that you've gone through, right. like this. Maybe somebody in their family, because somebody's you know particularly here in the Montgomery area and the surrounding right. area, something that I know as a pastor I pray for all the time. I bind the spirit of murder because that's, it really is a spirit. Right. Um, and maybe somebody out there has lost a loved one. I, I was listening to someone the other day that was talking about the heart that was aching uh, on the news because of uh, a drive-by shooting. What would, what would you say to them in your, in your, poetic, in your prophetic and, 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 uh, and poetic right. Uh, right. words? I would tell them to keep their faith in God. You know, we're only here for a short period of time. And while we're here, we, every one of us has a purpose. We got to make the best of it. And sometimes when things happen to you, you got to find your heart to forgive. It's not always that you forgiving that person. It's that so you can make it right with God who forgave everyone. You know, forgiveness is forgiveness is it for me for for me to try to forgive this young man. You know, it took a lot from me, but at the same time, I had to look at it when I was at my lowest, and when I needed help, God came and gave me peace in my heart. I used to be a rough person, an angry person. I used to hate a lot of things. I did a lot of bad things, so I don't confess to be a good person. But I will tell you this, when tragedy strikes, we got to stand strong and keep our faith in God because he's, he's the creator of all. We're his. If he comes and takes something, he's only taking back what's already his. Amen. Now, uh, Marshall, you've written a book. Now, pronounce that word for me. Tell at least I. Telelista. It's a Greek word that means it is finished. It is finished. Get, 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 kind of uh, tell us the inspiration behind this book. That's my seventh book. And I thought I was done with that book. It's mainly talking about what transpired with my son and what transpired with a lot of other people during this time because it was a lot of shoes, a lot of deaths, a lot of people lost, lost loved ones. And I thought I was done, but God put it on my heart to write an eighth book called Life After. It's like the rebirth. But that book right there, it helps out a lot of people. Matter of fact, I got a poem, another poem from yeah. that book. It's called My Son Speaks. This was when we didn't know who the killer was because it took a month for him to be arrested. And this is me 
giving comfort to my wife and my daughter during this time where I'm putting myself in my son's mind state. From heaven, my son speaks through my pen and says, Pops, don't worry, I made it in. Tell Mama there's nothing she could have done. It was already written, my life would end. I was told I would be betrayed by the angel Gable, and his words became my final post. Despite my early demise, stay positive, Mom and Pop, because one day soon I'll see you and Sister both. I felt no pain from the Buddhists, because the archangel Michael shielded me. He who throw rocks and hide his hands will be exposed, because in due season God will reveal who killed me. In my 23 years, I enjoyed the moment to the fullest of my borrowed time. Pop, I know you're angry, but I ask you to allow God to be the prosecutor in this crime. Tell Mama don't cry so much. I try to get some sleep so I too can rest in peace. Tell Sister I love her and I miss her, but in her heart I will forever speak. Pop, I never seen you cry to now, but every soul must one day weep. Continue to be an inspiration to the world, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Tell Mama, Uncle Hook, and Granddad are here with me. Therefore, I am not alone. You always said I was an angel, Pop, and you was right. I'll see you all again when you all come home. I love you, Pop. Mama, sister, and smile at how so many pretend they love me. Pops, let my last words speak to my frenemies. From the cradle to the grave, only God can judge me. Amen, my frenemies. My friend, Danny, that's good, Brother Marshall. Wow. You know, the, whole, the, the, the Holy Spirit let you get an insight, and, and I would say that point, what I felt about it when you read it was, a, was a prophetic, very prophetic, right. that God is letting you get a glimpse of, uh, of, of your son. Right. and what he would say. And I know that's got to bring comfort to so it, many people. It does. When he lifted, when God, when God lifted me up and dusted me off and made me the inspiration, he wanted me to go out in the flesh, to take the church outside the church. And that's what I had been doing. I had been going to different churches and different prisons and places, speaking to youth, uh, older people, uh, whoever that needs a blessing. Because I feel like he guides me. He fills my pen with holy ink. And when I write, I can become an old lady. I can become an old man laying in the street. I can become anybody, you know, through the words that he gives me. So I always say, God is the author and I'm the writer. Right, that's good. Yeah, uh, one, of, one, one of the gospel quartets got a song they do called uh, uh, Ask the Blind Man, you know. And, uh, of course, when I first heard it, I was thinking of the little, we probably all heard it, you know, early one morning, late one night, two dead boys got up to fight back to back. They faced each other, pulled out their swords and shot each other. Death policeman heard the noise and came and shot the two dead boys. Now, if you don't believe me, ask the blind man. He saw it all. Uh, that's just a little uh, poem, you know, as a kid you learn growing up. But, but the, the object of that was that there was a person raised from the dead. There was a person cleansed of leopard. There was a person that was uh, lame could could walk and then there was a person that was blind that right. God healed. so God you know God heals God and not only did God heal physically but you're tapping into something because death is is inevitable everybody's yeah. going to die it is appointed unto man to die and after death the judgment so when as long as we're in these moral bodies to Jesus come we're yeah. going we're going to die uh, we can't all pick our death how we're going to die uh, but but when we understand that death is a is is something that is very real to all of us, yeah, it's true. Uh, we've been I've been surrounded by death as a young man, being in the military in Vietnam. Uh, I've been surrounded with death. Uh, I don't think you ever fully become adjusted to it. Losing a loved one, losing a son. I've lost I've lost a, a granddaughter and a grandson to 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 death. Uh, and so I understand there's some things that can't that there's no word there's no human word I could sit here and try to talk to you as a pastor to a pastor to uh, and tell you everything that God says but nothing's going to take that place of right. that pain but the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit could only one bring you complete peace right. and complete rest so you know as, as this segment comes to an end I want you to pray for men and women listen if you're out there right now, uh, first of all, call in. Get a counselor to pray with you at 1-888-731-1000.
but when when my brother prays here in a minute, if if you're going through tragedy in your life, if you know somebody's going through tragedy in your life, if you can get to them in a hurry, say you got to you got to receive this prayer, because I believe that when Brother Pope prays, I believe that God is going to reach down and touch you by His Holy Spirit. And he will answer some questions for you that you've been having concerning the death of a loved one. He will be able to put his arms around you and love you and bring comfort, comfort you that nobody, I don't care how bad somebody wants to comfort you, they can't because they don't know. And they, no, no words are going to be good enough. No words are going to be. But the Holy Spirit can put his arms around you. And he can touch you. And he can minister to you right now strengthen you. So receive this prayer as my brother prays. Pray for them and we believe the Holy Spirit is being released. Father God, I come to you as your humble servant. Father, I ask that you come back. Walk upon the earth, Lord. I ask that you drown the world again, Lord, with love and a sprinkle of compassion, Lord. We need your strength. We need faith, Lord. We need healing, Lord. We need your mercy, Lord. Thank you for always being compassionate to us, Lord. Thank you for always being there when I needed you, Lord. Thank you for being there in my time of grief, Lord. Thank you for everything you ever done for me, Lord. Thank you for bringing me up out the dirt, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you help someone who needs you more than I do, Lord. Bless someone who doesn't have a home, Lord. Someone who's starving, Lord. Someone who's cold, Lord. They need your arms to wrap around them, Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I pray. Amen. Get on the web page right here and get on Amazon and get this book. It'll help you. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.